In this video, we're going to focus on Chart.js horizontal bar chart, or more specifically, how to create in Chart.js a horizontal bar chart. So let's start and explore. To do this, we have here a very, we're going to grab the very basic part, and afterward, we're going to make this in a way that is more and more consistently shown on the Chart.js documentation. So to do this, let's grab this entire chunk of code by clicking on this nice button here in the chartjs.org and just a quick note this is version 3.4.0 this is the latest one as of now and in here we're going to just paste this in here so once I paste this in here we give this a proper indentation I'm going to delete the width and height here and I'll just make a div in here oh not in here but just above div class and then we give this a class name and afterwards we're going to uh, assign a specific width in there. So let's say here this will be chart box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a fixed width of 700 pixels in CSS because this will make sure that chart.js or the canvas will not scale into infinity. So I say here this style, let's say here dot chart box, open up the brackets, and then in here with 700 pixels. All right, save that. We're not done yet. We want to get the uh, Chart.js library as well, so just click here on getting started, click on the submenu getting started. Now we're going to grab this code or this link here basically, just grab that in there and put it in here but make sure that this is above the chunk of code because this is the part that first needs to load and this is dependent on whatever is in here. Alright, so now we have this here, if I save this, refresh, we have now a bar chart and I want to make it a horizontal bar chart but as well, as I said, earlier you can see here is the, the config and the setup structure and I want to use this I want to convert what we have here into that structure all right now afterwards we're going to convert into a horizontal bar chart so how to do this well let me explain here three blocks and these are the three blocks that you're going to work with and this is going to be very important as in the near future we'll be using this probably more and more consistently we have three blocks we have the setup block we have here the config block and we have here what I would call the render block and the render would mean all the drawing the chart the setup block is all the data that consists in the chart and the conf config block is basically the configurations that we want to put in like in the options etc etc so you can see here in the getting started they show the config first and then the setup but here's a quick quick warning setup must load first afterwards the config and finally the rendering which makes sense because this will depend on whatever is in here but this has maybe constants and variables that will be specified in the setup so setup first and then config and then render all right so once you know this structure you can start to work with it so as i specified earlier this consists all the data so what you're going to make what you're going to do here you're going to give the constant and this constant will be data and this constant data equals basically the data that we have in here specifically this the labels and the data sets here so what we're going to do is I'm going to comment out this one because this is connected to this data here we don't need to copy this because this will be later on used we just grab all of this here and cut this out once we cut that out paste it in here all right there we are so that is looks wonderful then what we do here is semicolon all right, very important, use semicolon here. Once we did this, we're basically done with all the data. If you have like a constant that would maybe, let's say here, labels, and then we say your constant labels would be the labels here, you can do that. Put it in here like that, semicolon here, and then here you can put in a constant of label, or labels, why? Because this one needs to load first before you have that here loaded. Very important here, this structuring is essential. Now you're done with that, let's explore the config part. With the config part, we have to work with the other items, which is the three core parts of the chart. And what are they? Well, they are basically the my type, or sorry, not the my type, it's the type of chart, the data, and the options. And here the data is basically just this part here. We will put it as a comma, because this data is a variable referred in here. All right, so we specify where the data needs to be loaded, loaded, which is between here, of course. All right, so in here, all we do is here, we make a constant, and we say config, and in here, curly brackets, 
semicolon below there and now in here we just say the following type and then we say here bar because it's a bar type remember and then in here we put in data with a comma and finally we will have the options and what we will do with the options i can just copy all of this here because we want to make sure that this still exists here we have all the options in here all right so there we are there we are just put a proper indentation here and so all right so once we did this we're done with all of the essentials here basically we did the options we did the data we did now everything so now we are basically on the very last part which will be related to this part here creating a new object with the name chart so what we will do here is we're going to give it a constant and we can say here constant will be my chart and i'm using my chart just for one reason because we were going to refer to the ID canvas here. And I like to use the ID name consistently with the, uh, as a constant, as well as for my, uh, for the element that we'll get by ID. So it's easy to find it in your HTML document. All right, in here, we're going to do the following. We say this, we say new, create a new object with the name chart. And in here, put it semicolon. And put it in here all right and in here we say the following and this is the following we say your document dot get element by id and what is the id name well you guessed it that's the my chart so we have that exactly match with each other comma and why comma because we will have another value as well and what will be the value very straightforward the config value here copy that put it in there no need for comma here because there's no continuation of it and then basically we can remove this. However, if I remove this, and you might say, wait a minute, what about this here? You're right. No need for this. Charge.js uh, version three created a new way where basically this is more than sufficient. It will understand based on that, that get context, or this is basically, because the get context means draw a canvas based on whatever data we have here above. That's basically the true meaning of this. It will understand that it is connected to a canvas so that's really nice so you can shorten your code on this all right so that's the most important one so don't need to work if we save this now go back here refresh we have a chart working as well a bar chart but now of course let's convert it into a horizontal bar chart in chart js3 they change the structure on that to do that let's go and look here in the chart type we're going to type in here bar chart and then we're going to scroll down here and let's see here, we're going to search for a very specific term, index axis. So this is a string value, default set on x, meaning the x axis. And what we want to do is we want to convert that now, instead of an x axis, we want to make this a, a y axis, y, or the, the y axis. The reason is this, y might be as well, because uh, it's probably also the right term, but might be confused with the y axis and y. So why do we need this or more specifically the reason the reason for this is this is basically that this is now the starting point when we want to convert that we're going to push this here so that these colors will be on the side here and then automatically the bars will start horizontally instead of vertically right now they are going up and down vertically now let's move horizontally where do we we indicate the index axis let's look at the namespace here only the data options here to be more specifically you can see here the options we can do here in the data sets so we can do it specifically in the data sets or you could go even deeper in here in the options but doesn't matter in our case we can just do it here and then we say here instead of the x which is by default we're going to put in a y make sure you give a comma here for the border width save this refresh oh uh let's see what's going on here i think we still need one more thing i realize Let's go here to the x-axis, our index axis here is uh, for vertical bars set on y, horizontal bars, all right, where do we need to specify, or maybe I need to specify it more specifically in the general, or probably in the options. Let's move it to the options, let's cut this out, remove the comma, go here in the options, put it in here. Make a comma here, save this, and then refresh. There you are. So apparently, not in here, might give you confusion. You can do it in here. 
Although I was expecting here that maybe there's a category specification that we need to do, but it doesn't matter. In this case now, basically what we're doing is we just convert them or switch the x-axis and the y-axis with each other. Where the colors become here, and this is what we call the the Cartesian or the category axis, because we give the a category with a specific name. There are no numbers like the other one. Is just what we did. It created a slightly scattered chart, which I don't want. Because we need this here, and this is basically how we create a horizontal bar chart with the same structure that they are now starting to use in the documentation: the configs, the setup, and of course the render. Make sure. Set up first, after load the config, and afterwards, finally, the render block. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course, where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.